on this idea of feeling unworthy. I, I gather that a lot of us are in that space, and I think maybe we'd be better suited to not feeling unworthy if we had a clearer idea of the source that you're always talking about. We are the leading edge of source. We are the leading edge of source energy. We are the leading edge of all that is. What is all that is? What is source? What is that? Well, we agree with you. An attitude of worthiness is really the most essential key for aligning with source because when you understand, which is hard for you to understand, it's the point of your question that you are source. When you understand that you are source energy in a physical body, then you allow yourself to be all that source is. And what source is, is eager and enthusiastic and never finished and always expanding. What source is, is enjoying the moment and always looking for the opportunity to expand and letting joy be the quest. In other words, always working for vibrational alignment, understanding that expansion is inevitable. But you bring a good point here that wouldn't it be nice if physical beings could begin to understand on a broader basis or even on an individual basis their own personal worthiness. And we say, we can talk about it, we can use words like worthy, we can use words like source, we can call you extensions of source, but when it comes right down to it, those are all just words, and for the most part, words don't mean very much. What means much is personal experience and the way you feel amidst a personal experience. That's why when you were born into this physical body, there was an agreement that there would be a universal vibrational language that everybody gets. In other words, the one-celled organism gets it, for heaven's sakes. The beasts of your planet get it, in other words. And man's just too smart. He's talked himself out of it. Man has become so intellectual and so willing to debate all of the issues and so willing to collect all of the data and so willing to listen to so many different voices as he tries to find consensus about what's right or wrong what's good or bad, what's appropriate or inappropriate, that most humans have, for the most part, completely lost sense, once they become adults anyway, of their own guidance system, which is pointing out that vibrational relativity. So we believe that the key to moving into that vibration of worthiness, and oh, it, worthiness, you know how worthiness feels? Worthiness feels like pride. It feels like exhilaration. It feels like love. It feels like appreciation. To try to find words and try to use words to describe feelings, we would ever so much rather that you just have the feeling and not worry about trying to put a word to it. So that's why your guidance system is the way that it is. Your guidance system says that when you are moving in the direction of who you really are, you will feel that calling, that good feeling, that sensation. That's what love is. And we want to ask you, and we're going to be very bold and blunt about it, what's so hard about accepting the goodness of something that feels good? And what's so hard about accepting that if it doesn't feel good, that it's moving away from? In other words, so many of the words that we've offered over time to help you sort of get a sense of your relationship with who you really are, all of that has been about worthiness. In other words, we're trying to get you in vibrational sync with who you are. We're wanting you to be one with who you are, you see. And so you couldn't have started with a better question because that word, that word worthiness, speaks to that alignment, that energy alignment, better than any other word that we can think that you might offer to us, you see. So you think thoughts. You're standing where you are, and it doesn't matter how you got here. Magellan never says to Jerry and Esther, where have you been? <laughs> Magellan never says, I will calculate your route for you, but where were you yesterday and where were you the day before that and where were you the day before that? It's irrelevant. The only thing that is relevant is where you now are. So all of you, no matter what, are where you are and where you are in relationship to something else that you want, every single one. And when you get it, and this is part of that worthiness thing, when you get it, and whether you get it or not, we get it, we know it, it is, whether you get it or not, when you are having an experience and a desire is born within you, source says yes. Now, we want to appeal to your logic. Maybe appealing to your logic will bring you on the path to your feeling of worthiness. If you are out here having your experience, who do you think better to choose for you the appropriateness or this or that than you? No one. <laughs> no one. No matter what point of consciousness you are, your specific point of consciousness, you know better, don't you? Imagine if Jerry and Esther had taken it upon themselves to make all of your arrangements to come here. 
They called all of your cabs. They called all of the airlines. They did everything. What if they had made all of the arrangements for all of your sleeping and all of your food and all of your transportation? And a lot of you would be lost out there somewhere because Jerry and Esther do not have the ability or the time or the precision to take care of you in the way that you have the ability to take care of you. Now that's just a sketchy analogy, but the basis of it is what we want you to hear. No one in all of the universe can decide more for that one-celled organism what's better for it than the one-celled organism that is having the experience. And nobody knows better for you than you. And Source is so knowing that. So it won with this perfect plan which allows the perfect expansion of this perfect universe that when you ask at any level it is given every single time. Now we're giving all of this to you in our quest to help you come round to accepting the worthy nature of your being. But you know what happens to so many people? So many people have not been paying any attention to the way energy feels or to the alignment or to the fact that they're disconnected from who they are. Do you know that the feeling of negative emotion in and of itself, that empty, icky feeling is just what you feel like when you have vibrated out of range of that which is your source. In other words, when you get it that you are an extension of source energy and you can feel your vibrational relativity to your source energy, then you begin to understand that you can guide yourself in an effective way. So now let's bring this back around to the subject of worthiness. The most significant sensitivity to vibration is what you feel in your emotional center. In other words, the emotions that you feel are your indicators of where you are in vibrational relativity to who you are. They are your worthiness sensors, you might say. You can tell by the way you feel when you're in alignment with who you are. And what could be more a state of worthiness than to be on the same vibrational wavelength of that which is your source? So what causes people to get separated from that? How could anybody get separated from the vibration? So how could anybody get crossways of their own guidance system? Yeah. It's because instead of paying attention to vibration, most people are looking at the manifestations or the results of vibrations. And then they are working to control those conditions because after all, most people are offering most of their vibration in response to what they see. So we understand that if you see something that makes you feel wonderful, you want more of it. And if you see something that makes you feel awful, you'd like to contain that condition or get rid of that condition. But what happens in all of that sifting and sorting of manifestations is that man has created endless distortions of how he compares himself with others and the results that he comes to rather than using the sensor that he was born with in order to understand. When we talk about this emotional scale and we say if you're in despair and you find the life-giving breath of fresh air that revenge gives you, most people really are afraid of that kind of language because they see terrorists out there offering revenge and they don't like the results of their revenge. And we say, but if we were talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, we would acknowledge that in their revenge they are in a better vibrational place than they were in their feeling of powerlessness. Nobody goes to revenge without feeling powerlessness first. We promise you. There is no one offering revenge of any kind who is not trying to level the playing field and trying to get some of their personal power back, you see. Now that's a long way from worthiness, isn't it? Worthiness is a long way from revenge. But we want to say revenge is a step in the right direction to worthiness. Now hopefully you can move through revenge without acting on it and maybe move into rage or anger and some of those delicious, bright, fluffy emotions. <laughs> Comparatively speaking, aren't they? Comparatively speaking, can't you feel that when you move up the emotional scale that there is a releasing of resistance that is shown to you by relief that you feel, you see? So as you move from despair or powerlessness into revenge and then into anger and then into frustration and then into hoping and then into believing and then into knowing. And of course, there are a lot of different steps along the way. But what you begin to notice is that you have control over the direction that you are moving while you don't have control, not right now, over how big of a jump you can take because law of attraction has that control. Law of attraction 
is in charge of how far you can jump how fast on the vibrational scale. And we think that's the reason that so many people have sort of stepped away from understanding their own guidance is because they try to make too big of a jump. They don't make the jump. Then they look outside of themselves. They try to get somebody else's opinion about where they are. And nobody else's opinion can give you any true information about your vibrational relativity. So you've hit it right on the head when you come wanting to know more about worthiness because we want you to know about that too. But friend, we'll teach you revenge first. <laughs> and of course for you, we would be taking you the wrong way on the emotional scale because you're not in despair, but you get the sense of what we're talking about. And so, so we don't know anyone who really begins to feel worthy who isn't somewhere at the low point in the range of frustration who isn't often reaching into appreciation and into love. In other words, what that feeling of worthiness is it's the feeling of being who I really am isn't that really the definition the utter definition of worthiness it's the being the keeper of that which is truly what I am and humility or a feeling that there is something that is so much greater than I am and I am humbly less than it that drives a wedge between the vibration of you and you, you say see? that again please that was excellent say that again please an attitude of humility or fostering an attitude of being humble is vibrationally opposite of worthiness because humility is saying there is something out there that is much greater than that which I am and I'm using this word humility to drive a wedge between the power that is really me and the power that I'm only allowing myself to assign to myself right here and now you can't be humble and worthy at the same time. They are different vibrations, you yes, see. Yes, yes, thank you. And so it isn't until you tune yourself into your own vibrational guidance system that you can even tell. We see so many people just spinning around out there lost in the desert, out there in Yuma somewhere, because they're trying to get somebody over there to give them guidance and somebody over there to give them guidance. When the only thing that can give you guidance is the vibrational relationship between where you are and where you want to be. And your source, that which is really you, is always flowing to you, never forsakes you, never gives up on you, never says you're a lost cause, never says you didn't listen yesterday and so I'm not going to give it to you today. Can you imagine Jerry and Esther, they program their destination, Magellan says, nope, you didn't listen yesterday. <laughs> times do I have to say please proceed to the highlighted ground I'm not saying it again and your guidance system is always there for you too always giving you the feedback and the thing that we so much want you to hear is so here you are you just get to make the decision now it's not a big decision you're not trying to make the decision right now to get all the way over there you're just forking in the general direction so here's what we see sometimes you do here you are and it's not quite where you want to be, but instead of making the best of where you are, you make the worst of where you are. And then you're even closer to where you don't want to be. And so now you try to justify why you're where you don't want to be by making the worst of it again. And then it's worse, yeah. now more people are involved. And so now you, <laughs> and so you justify still further and you go more in the direction of where you don't want to go. It doesn't matter how many forks you've taken toward what you don't want. At any point, you can start forking over here. And what we notice for most of you, you go this way and this way, and then you go this way and this way, and then you go this way and that way, and then that way and that way. In other words, have you ever gone anywhere between where you are and where you want to be and just gone in an absolute straight line? You don't do that, do you? You go up and down and around, and the same thing is true as you're trying to find your place here. But if your intent is to find the best feeling thought that you can find from where you are, and you manage to do that, and then your intent is to find the best feeling thought from where you are, and you manage to do that, then what begins to happen is you begin leaning in the direction on all subjects of what you are wanting. And life just gets better and better and better and better and better because finally you've quantified your journey finally you're in charge finally you can feel vibrationally whether you're moving toward or away from the things that are important to you you're really good at this <laughs> it's so easy when you understand these simple things law of attraction is always accurate and I can always tell by the way I feel where I am in relationship to what I want. It could not be easier, you see. 
And there's one other thing that we know that we practice every day that you don't yet. We don't give a rip what anybody else thinks. Because the only thing that is important is vibrational relationship, you see. All that other stuff is irrelevant. Other people's opinions, other people's impressions, other people's perspectives, none of that makes any difference because they do not have anything to do with the vibrational relationship between where you are and where you are. Yes. Excellent. Thank you.